One of the most magnificent spectacles of the ancient world into which our Lord Jesus was born was the Roman triumphal procession. When a Roman general won an especially astounding victory over one of the enemies of the empire, he would return to the city of Rome with his army and a great parade would be thrown in his honor. The parade consisted of a long procession, first of the captured nobles of the conquered people, then exotic animals from the conquered territory, then wagons filled with silver, gold, and precious works of art pillaged from the conquered city. At the end of it all rode the proud and victorious general in a chariot, crowned with a laurel wreath and wearing robes of royal purple. As he went through the streets, throngs of Roman citizens would hail him as a conqueror, a victor, a winner. Poor St. Peter in our gospel probably had something like a Roman triumphal procession in mind when he confessed Jesus as the Christ. He thought Jesus, when he inaugurated the kingdom of God, would enjoy such a triumph and that he, Peter, as one of his followers, would enjoy the same glory. Nothing, however, could be more different from a Roman triumph than the path our Lord Jesus walked to inaugurate his kingdom. We are reminded of that path every time we gaze upon the 14 stations of the cross in our churches. Instead of being crowned with a laurel wreath, our Lord was crowned with thorns. Instead of being carried by a magnificent chariot, the Lord carried the cross on which he was crucified. Instead of being greeted with shouts of joy, he was mocked and scorned. St. Peter's mistake about what the kingdom of God and its victory would look like, forces us to take stock of what we imagine our following of Christ to look like. Do we imagine it to be a triumphal Roman procession where we are celebrated? Or do we correctly understand it as following Jesus on his way of the cross? On Friday, we were reminded that it's Jesus' way that is the true triumph. Those proud Roman generals, with all their glory, are dead. They lay in their tombs dust and bones, and the names they emblazoned on their marble monuments in their own honor are fading even now. But Jesus lives. His tomb is empty, and he reigns in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Today the Lord is asking us to follow him, to follow his path in the kingdom, a path of tears, trials, difficulties, yes, but a path of true glory, true triumph. It's the path to heaven, and the Lord Jesus is inviting us to follow it today.